Hi, I'm Pat, and today I'm going to share with you some tips on how to position your right hand when you're standing out on the Weizenborn. But first of all, keep in mind that there is not one single way to position your right hand on the Weizenborn, because it depends, of course, on the sound you want to get, and also different right hand techniques would obviously require different right hand positions. But, you know, when you're starting out, trying to find a nice, comfortable position uh, can be a bit confusing and feel awkward. So what I'm going to show you today is what I think is the best way to get you started on that. But... Again, keep in mind that once you start making progress on your instrument, uh, learn new techniques and all that, uh, your right hand position will most likely change as well. So let's go to a close up now and I'll show you the basics of positioning your right hand on the wise and board. Okay, so the most important thing in my opinion when you first try to position your right hand on the wise and board is to find an anchor, right? What I don't recommend is to have your arm floating like this all the time. Because although this could be desirable at certain times or for a specific part of a tune, if you have your arm floating like this all the time when you're starting out, I think it will be much more difficult to acquire a good technique and get a consistent sound. And also your forearm can get really tired that way. So what I recommend is to rest your forearm, this part here, rest it on the instrument's body. How about, you know, where the top meets the side of your instrument. So let your forearm rest comfortably on the body of your instrument and then let your fingers fall naturally on the strings. And what you can do as well is rest this part of your hand on the lower strings, okay? But of course only when you're playing the high strings, otherwise you wouldn't be able to play the lower strings if you rest your right hand on them all the time, of course. Now, where to position your right hand? Should it be here? Should it be here? Should it be here? Well, it depends. <laughs> If you do some right hand muting, then it should be closer to the bridge, obviously, because in, in that case you can slightly mute the lower strings, okay, and not completely mute them, like you would do here, okay. So in the case of right hand muting, you would uh, probably place your right hand close to the bridge. But if you don't do any muting at all, then it's open to experimentation. And it also depends on whether you use finger picks or not. If you use finger picks, the sound is generally brighter than if you play with bare fingers and don't have long fingernails. So what I usually recommend in this case as a you know, general rule of thumb is to place your right hand closer to the sound hole. This is what I think gives, gives the best overall sound, at least on my instrument. So it's not as trebly as it would be near the bridge or as bassy as it would be here, or even right in front of the sound hole. Okay. So this is where I recommend to, to first start off, but of course sometimes we would want to pick there, or near the bridge as well, you know, like in the case of right and muting. Also, as I've said, if you play with bare fingers and don't have long fingernails, the sound you would get out of the instrument might be a little less bright. So in this case, you'd probably want to experiment actually a bit closer to the bridge. Okay. So in the end, once you've rested your forearm on the instrument's body, it all comes down to experimenting with the right end position, close to the sound hole or closer to the bridge. Okay. Also note, there are other possible anchors. For example, some people will rest the palm of their hand on the bridge here, this part here. Some people will rest their hand here, even when they're not muting. But I personally don't do that, you know, I find this gives too much of a terribly sound, okay? On my instrument at least, but it might be different on yours. Also, some people would put their pinky here as, a, as another anchor. And I don't do that either, since my fingers are curled up when I play. But again, you can experiment with that too, because as I've said before, there is not one right way to do things, you know. If you're confused or don't know what's best for you right now, this is what I recommend. Forearm on your instrument's body, and, and then if you use finger pick, experiment with the right hand uh, closer to the sound hole, or if you play with bare fingers and don't have long fingernails, try to play a bit closer to the bridge. One very last important thing is to make sure you don't have any tension in your forearm or elbow, okay? Tension is something you really want to avoid because it will definitely mess up your technique and it can lead to serious arm problems as well. So try to be really relaxed, okay? Let your, your forearm really relax and you don't want to hurt yourself, basically. You know, it will probably take some time to find a sweet spot, but this is normal. Every new technique needs some practice. So be patient and I'm sure you eventually find what works best for you. 
Okay, so before wrapping this up, I'm going to show you the same basic exercise that I've taught in my Dobro Beginner Series lesson about how to position your right hand on the Dobro. It's a very easy one, but just in case you have trouble following my explanations and playing at the same time, there is a free PDF file that comes up with this lesson. So make sure to go to the website and download it if you need. So let's start off by picking the three I strings one at a time like this. Okay, strings three, two, and one. And at this point, maybe you'd like to move your right hand more left or more right if you don't like the sound coming out of your instrument. So experiment a bit with that. And then once you've settled with uh, your right hand position, move one string up and pick strings four, three, and two. Okay. Try to see how it feels like with your right hand. Okay? You might have to bend your wrist just a little when you change strings as well. Then keep going. Strings five, th uh, four, and three now. And notice how you might have to move your forearm back just a little when you uh, change strings, okay? This is normal, but you know, still try to let your forearm rest on the instrument's body, okay? It's really important. And then pick strings um, six, five, and four. Okay? Stay really relaxed again with your, um, with your forearm, no tension. And then you can go down. Five, four, three. Four, three, two, three, two, one. Okay. And again and again. Okay, so I hope this helps you get the basics of positioning right hand on the wise and moon. Once again, I'm Pat with learningwithpat.com. If you like the lessons, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can also find my page on social media as well, like Facebook, Twitter, etc. So I hope to see you there too. Uh, until then, have a good one. Thanks. Bye-bye.